I've been up for 24 hours. Now. Where are we going? Down that way. Can yeah, you go down two flights of steps? We gotta carry my chair down. But I meant like really like where are we going? Like, oh, the bookstore. And you're gonna like it. Those things are funny because those are like wildflowers. So they're technically weeds and people just love them nowadays. I remember back when I was growing up, people hated them things. But they definitely don't, aren't gonna have any problems growing them. They need to do something right here. That's over in the corner, see what that white door is at. Mm -hmm. Okay. Best to read. I'm gonna have to buy something. <laughs> Oh, there's coloring books for the night. Oh, those are oh, that's children's, huh? Well, this place is interesting. Oh, I love it. I love it. I'm too old for this. I said my husband is be paying, but. Oh, that's interesting. Seems it sounds interesting. I bought. I bought this one. The Selena was a bad influence and convinced me to spend the It's not interesting. I, I read the little plot thing and it's really interesting. I mean, it, I, it tells you, like, because I was really curious about that and it actually tell, it came out and said why the Valeria was such a, um, a bad place. Like, why it was such a dangerous place now. And it's gonna tell you why, I suppose. But it's basically it boils down to like the civil war between the Targaryens, and um, something happened during the civil war when the Targaryens are fighting over they're getting the Iron Throne. To um, and I guess Valeria was the, the the place where that battle went down, and it caused them to basically that nation is completely like destroyed. I guess, but I really don't know the details. I have to. I mean, I've read the rest of the series, so it only makes sense but to read this too. And I think the new show that's coming out is going to be based on this. It is. And that'll help me understand the show better. But I got that. Got Cast Two Shadows. Then I got The Fountain. And I'm reading Atlas Shrugged. Bookstores are the only safe places around here. Surprisingly, actually. Books a million and um, Barnes and Noble can get kind of iffy because they do sometimes have scented products. But small bookstores like that, if the building isn't too compromised, I guess that it depends on if there's like if it's an old moly building. That's probably not very good, but this one, even though it was, that building was 32 years old, wasn't it? No, it was oh, older the, than that. The, the it bookstore was a, for it was a bookstore years. for 32 years, and it was a library for so many years before, before that. that. And then it was a dry goods store before that. So this was a really old building, but it, it was fine. In the summer, I can't get out and do a lot because of heat intolerance. And then when you combine that with most places not being safe due to centers, I can hardly ever go anywhere. In the winter, I can do things outside because cold doesn't bother me. There's like two stores. Bookstores and Kato. Oh yeah, I forgot about Kato's. Kato's really small and they don't have a lot of perfume. Do they have any perfume? I actually think they do a couple of the locations. Oh. Old Navy. I did do that once, but I ended up in the hospital the next day. I'm not so sure that was a go but it seemed pretty safe it might have been a coincidence so. then again you went during like the holidays too mm -hmm. so that could have been something to do with it also I don't know 
it could that could have been a coincidence. I, I think it was a coincidence. I wanna I don't know anyone named Shaquanda. Oh god. Good boy, Ted. <laughs> Get it, Teddy. Oh, they're really efficient tonight. After spending what? 10 seconds trying to get us to go check her in with peds. Um, and then they profusely apologized and they didn't triage her or anything. They just brought her straight back. Every time I've been to the ER that I haven't been by ambulance, they've thought I was peds. Every single time, not once. After we've been here for three, three years, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, three years. We have been flirting with the ER weekend and actually technically it started a week ago what are you doing after my tube change last friday i guess the manipulation or whatever triggered a pseudo obstruction and ever since then i keep spiking these random fevers that come along with the obstruction pain and we've been kind of waiting for that to turn into something before we go to the er because i don't want to go to the er unless um it's something that they would consider a true fever because while I consider 99 a fever because my normals in the 96, 97 range, technically the ER doesn't consider that a fever. So we were waiting until my temperature got to the 100.3 mark, which is the protocol for central lines. So we're coming in to get blood cultures, even though I'm sure it's a bowel thing, but just to make sure I haven't translocated since now the fever is persistent and going up. The pain is like intermittently bad. So we're gonna get scans to see how that is. And we realize that I've had 26 scans. This will be my 27th scan in one year. Yep, in 52 weeks. I'm swelling up now from something in this ER, and I can't place what it is. I'm not quite sure. Oh, one sided. Yeah, what one? <laughs> it's one cheek. Mm -hmm. I've got one cheek and one eye. That's like look up, look. I'd say something's wrong with that clock. She's delirious. Yes, delirious people. Delirious. And he's focused. I can hear everyone talking about me out there, and it's awkward. Does this yeah. hospital feel like home yet? Like when you I come miss, in, you just know the routine. I still miss my peds. I think what I miss about the peds, I like adult side better than peds because you don't have people bugging you all the time. You don't have like those random characters dressed up coming in. You don't have like snack people and um, no one wants to volunteer for the old people. So you don't have like, all the, and then you don't have like music therapy and art therapy and Child life You're so and stuff. socially introverted. I mean, I just don't like Kids that, and it like just, that. and then it just adds extra mast cell triggers for me when usually I was always there for a mast cell problem. But what I miss about my pediatric experience is that my main doctor, he was my everything. Like he was my cardiologist. He was my GI doctor. So like he was my PCP. Practice. He, he was pretty much everything but oncology because he couldn't prescribe cancer drugs. I mean, I didn't even have a GI doctor because he just did it all. And I guess that's, if I had to say something I missed, that would be what I missed. Overall, I like adult side better than the pediatric. I know, I am so tired. So, so tired. I've been up for 24 hours. Now, I did end up getting admitted. I've stayed up all night. I just got up for my three hour little cat nap. 
but basically they did a CT scan. What they think is happening is that I'm having micro perforations because my bowels are dilating and stretching so much that it allows bacteria to escape into my abdominal cavity, but it's not enough for it to spread to my bloodstream as of yet, and that my body is fighting it. And they suspect this, A, because of my scan, and B, because I have bands in my labs, and bands are indicative of infection and that your body is fighting something. But they're also looking into some gallbladder stuff because that can cause infection type issues. But th I, that would probably be an additional problem and not um, the primary issue. That what keeps happening is that I'll go through a bowel flare, I'll start with the pain. Even if the pain isn't like volvulus severe or some of my worst pseudo obstructions, the pain will worsen from my baseline and then all of a sudden I'll start feeling like I'm septic or like I have been when I'm septic. So I will spike a fever and I'll get the chills and my skin will even hurt to touch. My bones will ache. I'll present exactly like I have an infection, but then it'll eventually work itself out and it'll pass. And usually it passes after I go to the restroom. And that is a strange phenomenon that nobody can figure out. This time, after my tube change flare, the low grade fever keeps persisting. It wasn't breaking like it normally does and it had been 48 hours and by the 48 hour mark it was 100.6 and that is past the central line threshold where you need to get cultures but I knew like I just feel like something's brewing I I knew that it's likely not in my bloodstream yet but it could be if I didn't go get it treated so they started antibiotics they want me to see me like a little over 24 hours without a fever and then I can go home and continue my course of antibiotics but yeah I think that my body just keep kept trying to fight whatever this is off but then it would, it would be successful at it for a couple hours and then it would just come right back. I've still not had another fever since starting antibiotics, which is good, so they're considering letting me go home. My liver numbers are elevated. They've been elevated since the day of my volvulus, even before I started TPN, but I'm sure TPN is not helping the situation by any stretch of the imagination. They are thinking about ordering another MRCP, but I'm not sure if that will be done inpatient or outpatient. My liver numbers improve every time I'm on IV antibiotics. Once my bowel starts to flare, you will notice an increase in my numbers. And if it progresses to the point where I end up inpatient with infection-like symptoms along with my obstruction symptoms, then if they treat with antibiotics, then everything, or as far as the liver numbers, they trend back downwards. To my baseline. As of right now, the micro preparation is their best speculation. Now that I am stable again and my labs or cultures are still clear, so whatever this is is not spread to my blood, I probably should not have let this go on for as long as it has, but I can be stubborn. So we are blowing this popsicle thing. Till next time, folks. I'm home now. I'm a wee bit upset because my report from my ultrasound came through on the patient in my chart and the report reads completely different from what I was told by the physician. I have multiple stones in my gallbladder, sludge and wall thickening, and 
they didn't tell me. Although I still don't think that that is the cause of my temperature. It makes sense as to why my that part of the pain is not improving. I can tell the area is unhappy because it burns like mast cell burn. And when there's something that mass that's like all kind of off in your body, your mast cells just kind of flock to that area. And burning pain is like the number one sign of, for that for me. Anyways, I'm pretty sure them not wanting to do another surgery on me is why the physicians completely just disregarded that. There's always these kinds of issues when admitted. And it's frustrating. As a patient, you really have to advocate for yourself because someone else is not going to do it for you. And patient advocacy at the hospital everyone who go works at the hospital will tell you how helpful patient advocacy can be but that's a bunch of hooey because the patient advocacy is never for the patient they're always for the interests of the hospital politics so for now my bowel problem seems improved some my obstruction pain is gone to my baseline i wouldn't say gone but to my baseline for someone with chronic intestinal pseudo obstruction and my fevers are still down. It's just this, apparently, what's called bladder pain. And we kind of knew this was coming. The last GI doctor had told me about, had told me, and in my family, every single person on my mother's father's side has had their gallbladders removed. My grandpa left his gallstones in too long, and they blocked the duct and then he got necrotizing pancreatitis and it almost killed him. So while I don't want to undergo another surgery, which will undoubtedly be complicated by my bowels and my thousand other issues, I don't want to cause a thousand other problem, new problems by leaving gallstones and sludge in a non-functioning gallbladder. And Unfortunately, when the gallbladder is not necessarily being used through the GI tract, it worsens. TPN is hard on your gallbladder because it doesn't the gallbladder doesn't have to clear out the sludge for digestion. So it kind of sits there and, and it can solidify and cause the stones. I mean, my gallbladder had sludge in one stone while I was on J feed, so... But since going on TPN, evidently, now there are multiple stones and more sludge and now wall thickening. I can kind of see the writing on the wall, so to speak. So my mom's frustrated. I'm frustrated. The life of a complex patient.